now I'm going to start doing the sampling within the MPC2 software. I'm not going to use a standalone, just the software. I'll press Command 8, and we've opened up the sampler section. You'll see the top is my sampler section right here. And below this, we have the Q-Link, the pads, and the sampler open. Now, you'll see here, under Q-Link, I have screen selected. That means any commands on screen, I can actually use these knobs here to set parameters. For example, threshold level here, you'll see it affect the threshold level right here. I can pull this down again. I have on, I have off, then we have on. But that doesn't work for anything, obviously. I just tried it, it doesn't work. So you can see here, what we do have is just minutes and seconds that we can actually change those parameters. And those are, three, those are the three parameters we have here for dealing with sampler. Then we have our pads here. I can put a sample on any one of these pads in any bank A through H. Now next we have our sampler itself. Now the sample has an insert here. I can insert effects. I can set stereo mono. Currently it's set to stereo. You can actually see the input going in. This is my voice as I'm talking into the computer and the computer is registering my audio levels right there. And of course, next to that we have the sample length. I have arm. In record method, we have sample, we have slice, we have pad tap and pad hold. Those are the four different methods we have. I can also just add a slice if I want to add a slice. And this is our total sample section for the sampler. Now you'll see here, of course, we have inserts and I have input. So I'm going in mono. I'm just talking here into the microphone on my computer and then it's registering here within the sampler. Now I don't wanna go stereo. I wanna go mono. So I'm gonna come here to the stereo. I'll click here, I wanna go to mono. And now I'm in mono and notice here now, both left and right are full of the same audio level, which is actually my voice. It makes a somewhat thicker actual audio track, which I prefer if someone's singing actually. So that's kind of cool always. And so I have that there. Now I have a threshold level I set up here too as well. This means that once it crosses the threshold level, the software will start sampling. So let's say for example, I'm gonna set up a, can I do it here, let me see. I'll come to here and make it like a, I mean just a couple of seconds really. I wanna go like um, 20 seconds right there, right? I'll pull this off of here, I don't need that at all. I wanna change my threshold level so I can come to here on knob number one and just scroll up here and you'll see me as I turn this knob, it rises higher. So here it's at minus nine dB, that's below dB which be zero. So I'm gonna come higher than that, so if I stop talking, I start talking, it'll start, so I'll take lower than this. And now I talk and so it starts to sample. So, let's do this. I'm going to press arm, and then once I talk and I cross the threshold level, it will start to sample. So now I've talked, you saw what happened, it started to sample in my voice, it's good. If I wanna stop it, I can, rather than using the full 20 seconds, I'll stop it right here. And then I'm done. And now you'll see right here inside the software in this whole sample section right here, we can see we've got a sample there. I can play it. So now, so now I've talked, you slow. Okay, I can discard it. I can keep it. I can save it. I can edit the sample too as well. Boom, I can edit it right now. So now, so now I've talked, you slow. So you see that? is playing it back. Now, I'm not gonna do anything with it right now. I have no need for that. I'm gonna go back to sample, but once I select edit, you'll see here, it goes right to the sample edit window in sample edit mode here. And of course, that's command four. Now to get back to sample, let's press command eight, and I'm back here in sampler. Now, other thing I wanna do, I can actually come to here I may want to add an effect to this, right? So I may want to add an effect. Let's say you want to add an effect. Let's get a vintage effect. Let's get something different. I can add an MPC 3000 
MC60, these effects here. I got different VSTs I have I can add to as well. And I've got a whole bunch of VSTs here. As you can obviously see, just a ridiculous amount of them, but it's always good to have this. Uh, we'll go up to here, let's say. I want to put, let's say, a gate on my voice. There's a noise gate right there. I'll select the noise gate. I'll click on the noise gate here. And the noise gate now will affect the vocals. I can't hear it. So in order to hear any effect in your headsets, I would come to here. I, I select, select monitor, monitor and, and now I can, can hear it as I'm talking. Now the problem I'm having is there's a delay. As I talk, it gets to my headset and it's a delay. Now to compensate for any delay while sampling, I'm going to come here to preferences. And here I am in audio. So to lower this delay, I want to get down to something like this. And so now as I hear it, I'm closer to the sound. There's still a slight delay, but it's better. But the problem is I do hear some pops and clicks. So be aware that if you're going to try and do some audio input. So by hearing pops and clicks, I'll pull it back here to maybe 96 samples. And I can see that my buffer size is 96 with 2.0 milliseconds of latency. And my latency is adjusted for 9600, as you can see here. And as I listen back, there's less of the pops. So you want to find out where the pops start and where they end, because you don't want to record pops when you're dealing with the sampler. So I'll leave this, I'll close this out, and it's easier. Now this is just in case you have a singer coming in, you wanna just test out whether they can sing on the product or not, or how they're working with you. And if you can get it done, you can get it done. If not, check out your latency. You don't wanna have it so it's delayed. That's kinda of crazy. Now here with the noise gate, you can see I have the noise gate open here. And then once I'm quiet, the noise gate shuts out. So I wanna change the hold level here. I'm gonna bring the hold level down. And the further down I bring it here, the noise gate reacts quickly. I'm gonna go down to, that's uh, 156 milliseconds. Let's get it lower than this. And it cuts off quickly. I'm talking, I'm talking, and once I stop talking, bam, it cuts right off, which is really good. I wanna make sure my depth's good here. Make my denoiser better. Hello? Hello. That's pretty good. And it comes in quickly. So I want to probably hear this audio back. And I'm hearing it back. And then once I finish talking, it just cuts it off. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to record this. Uh, I'll set this sampler. I guess the sampler set for the right idea. I'm just going to record right now. Now as I'm recording, you'll see it just cut out. Then on. And you'll notice too that the in remains on, but the out cuts off the minute the reduction cuts into the audio coming into the noise gate. You hear a noise in the background there. Now watch this. I'm gonna pull this down to here. The background noise, but you can see the background noise is still there from the in. And I use the noise gate, particularly with a singer, uh, where I'm just going to practice a take or something. Maybe some, some bounce off the walls in the room as far as the reverberation or delay. So I'll use the noise gate for that purpose. And if they're just sitting in the room somewhere, there's going to be some noise, someone walking around outside or whatever, or a plane, train, or a car going by. I don't want to interfere with that, so I'll use the noise gate. 